Hello, it is John Fry here in Denver, Colorado, and with me, Mr. Lance Lawson. We are ready. We're ready to give you a uh, a quick tour through some slides, uh, which will help you understand how active ingredients can help improve plant production and performance. Uh, we did this last year at ProGreen, and it was awesome. And we had so many great questions. And it was so great to see a lot of you. And it's obviously not the situation this year. Um, we'll, we'll try to have some fun doing this like we did a year ago. And we'll try to give you some things to consider. And you've got us in the market for any questions uh, at the end. We'll both give you some information to give us uh, a chance to get in contact with you if you need. And here we go. So what we will cover, here's the session outline. Uh, general description of what active ingredients are, the benefits that they have to plant material. And we'll share some photographs and some videos that will show root level activity. The two active ingredients that we will discuss in detail today our mycorrhizae and biofungicide. We'll spend a little time defining each of these. I'll talk first about mycorrhizae. Lance will then talk about biofungicide and he'll even bring later in the presentation those two active ingredients together and discuss their benefits. So first question, why would we add active ingredients? Nutrients and water are essential components for effective plant growth. We all know that. Most growing media is constituted of peat, cocoa, perlite, bark, and other materials that are poor in microorganism content and diversity. I think we all know that. So by adding active ingredients such as mycorrhizae and bacillus or biofungicide, efficient use of water and nutrients will be promoted. Lance will also spend some time talking about how biofungicide can protect from some of the root diseases that are common with greenhouse plant production. This slide, probably one of my favorite slides in this presentation, very simple and at the same time, very interesting. So let's start with mycorrhizae. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus, which is used to stimulate the rooting network of plants. Now, you'll hear us use some words in this presentation, which you may or may not choose to use. Um, you'll also hear me at times try to make it very conveyable in terms of what these products do. I'm gonna take my first bus stop and I'm gonna describe mycorrhizae as an improvement to the plant's plumbing system. So what we're trying to do with mycorrhizae is we're trying to get more water and more nutrients up to the plant. We do that by colonizing the plant, by associating this dormant spore through a symbiotic relationship with the plant and increasing its surface area, increasing its plumbing system, increasing its capability of moving nutrients up to the plant for top growth, for fruiting, for plant health. On the left, you see the photograph of a root with no mycorrhizae. And on the right, you see that mycorrhizae colonize this plant. Uh, you can even see the small out of focus dots. Those are the spores and they've germinated. They've associated with this plant and they've now created a network of hyphae or filaments that are helping move water and nutrients to the plant. I'll show you video footage of that later. Below is the photograph of biofungicide, bacillus. Lance will talk specifically about this and how it colonizes quickly and provides this protective biofilm on the roots. You can see the root in the center of the photograph and then you can see this protective biofilm Let's move to the next slide, which is specific about mycorrhizae. Another great photograph, microscopic level 
photograph of mycorrhizae, the spore, the hyphae, the rooting network that it's colonizing with. Again, mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus and it will associate with plants to help draw the water and nutrients from the soil. The benefits of using mycorrhizae with plant material, reducing transplant shock and stress, improving top growth and fruiting, water uptake, and efficient use of nutrients. Here there are two very good photographs again, with and without. On the left, no mycorrhizae. On the right, colonized with mycorrhizae. So I want to take a little time to discuss this slide. And if we think of transplant shock and stress, we want plant material to move from the container to the landscape and very quickly become comfortable in that new landscape. We want it to have a greater chance of surviving. And transplant shock is a, an obvious factor in that. If we can bring a plant into its new home using mycorrhizae, it will much more quickly establish the rooting system in that raised bed, in that landscape situation, in that container on the patio. The second point, improve top growth and fruiting. Pretty easy to understand the fact that if we can get more water and nutrients into the plant system, it's going to have greater opportunity to produce tomatoes, as an example. Water uptake and nutrient use. Uh, with this network established, the hyphae moving through the soil profile, finding water, finding nutrients that the plant could not find on its own. That's a benefit. And more efficient nutrient use. I sometimes think of this in a home gardening situation where I may be applying a fertilizer solution to a container. And at some point, I may leach some of that solution out of the bottom of the container and it runs onto the patio. What I want is a plant in that container that's got a real robust rooting network. So a web, um, a net, something that would catch this fertilizer solution as it moves from my watering can down through the container before it touches my patio. I want there to be a network of hyphae, of filaments that bring that up to the plant. There are a couple stages involved and the first uh, is spore germination. So again, dormant spores will be near plant material. They germinate in step one. In step two, they colonize the root. You have endomycorrhizae and ectomycorrhizae. Many of you I'm sure are familiar with those terms. Endomycorrhizae actually penetrate the root and attach. Ectomycorrhizae will attach to the outside of a root. And both operate similarly in terms of the benefits they provide the plant. Step three shown here is the hyphae network development. So once this association takes place, the spore and the plant are now one. They have created their symbiotic relationship and they begin to make an exchange. I'll show you that on the following slide. The exchange is the spore gets the energy from the plant that it needs to create this hyphae network. And the plant gets the additional water and nutrients that are gathered by that hyphae network. That's shown in step four. And a couple of interesting points, uh, spores don't need roots to germinate, but they do need those roots. They do need that association with a plant to continue their life cycle. So once the germination takes place, the spore basically is searching for food. And the place to find that food is from the plant that is exuding chemical signals. And that hyphae will drive its way over, attach to the plant and begin their relationship. Environment for success. Uh, 
warm, moist growing media is perfect. Uh, ideal temperatures of 60 to 85, very common in our, in our greenhouses uh, in this part of the country. And uh, knowing that it won't germinate the spores if uh, cold temperatures or very hot temperatures are present. Next, I would like to show you video evidence of mycorrhizae and how it transports water and nutrients. So what I'll do is I'll play this very short video. Before I do that, uh, point out a couple of things. You're gonna see here on this, let's call it interstate, um, you'll see water and nutrients traveling, you'll see sugars traveling in the opposite direction. Think of this like Interstate 25, although it's tilted 90 degrees. Think of this as Fort Collins, and Denver and I-25 northbound to Fort Collins would be the water and the nutrients that the hyphae network would pick up for the plant. Southbound on that, state, on that same road, Interstate 25, would be carbohydrates, sugars that the plant would exchange to the spore and give the spore the energy it needs to create this network. Here on the lower right corner of the screen, is a great picture of a, of a spore and its attachment to a rooting network. Here is that video. And again, you'll see the movement left and the movement right. The video is a little bit hard to, to see if you've seen it for the first time. I'm gonna play it a second time because it's short. And you can see again in opposite directions are moving water and nutrients and carbohydrates. The picture on the lower left is another example of what the network looks like and how it can create that additional surface area. There are some important things uh, within the world of mycorrhizae to understand. And the single most important thing is the spores need to be viable. So a viable spore, let's jump to the picture shown on the lower left side of the screen. A viable spore contains this pouch and that's the energy necessary to sustain the dormant spore until it associates with plant material. As you can imagine the picture just to the right of that, it's a ruptured spore so it won't have long-term the energy necessary to survive possibly in packaging or transport or both until it is associated with a plant. Another word that you'll hear me use quite a bit is hyphae and that's shown here in this green outlined area. Uh, it's a fragment and it's a vegetative structure and it's, it's not resistant against the stresses um, of, of packaging and transport, it does possess a very short lifespan. Um, is there a chance that hyphae can colonize plant material? Yes, there is a chance it could, but most likely it wouldn't. So we don't consider hyphae in the products that we design. We only consider viable spores. And again, that being shown on the left side of these photographs lined on the bottom, on the bottom of the page. Why do we do this? Because the structure has a superior resistance to stresses, a longer lifespan, and it's able to survive until it can get to the point of association with the plant. On the next slide, we'll talk briefly about production, uh, quality, data behind it. So for about 20 years, our group in a Quebec laboratory has been producing mycorrhizae, aseptic conditions, um, which means disease-free. I'm gonna show a very brief video. That black box will turn into the video here as I click it. This 
This is a pharmaceutical grade laboratory. All of the equipment, as you can see, is of stainless steel, um, much like you'd see in probably a vaccine or pharmaceutical production facility. Um, we have our team who's been there who are all high level trained scientists, R&D people, and that's an excellent shot of people cleaning the ceiling. Here's the mycorrhizae coming uh, in this liquid form. We store it in a very specific way to keep it viable in a liquid form until we create the products. We test it there on site. There's some excellent looking spores under a microscope. And we bring it into commercial production uh, with that facility, with that laboratory. On the right, you see a photograph that shows greenhouse production. And I'm sure that there are still some production processes that involve host plants where greenhouse production uh, plants are harvested, plants are then processed, essentially the roots being ground or chopped up where the mycorrhizae is hopefully intact. And then that, what's shown here in the photograph as a bit of a powder is then applied to or used to create final products. Uh, there can be contamination risks in that. There can be a lot of variability in quality using that method. So again, we are for over two decades operating in a aseptic pharmaceutical grade facility. And what that yields would be results. We wanna see plants as shown as uh, the left, the A plant, the B plant without mycorrhizae, the A plant having been colonized with mycorrhizae, lettuce on the uh, block to the left, cucumber on the block to the right. These plants, once inoculated, as you can see here, are robust. They've got roots that are ready to be in contact with their next growing media. Um, we're gonna have plants that move quickly through the growth cycle. They're not going to stumble. Uh, they're not gonna have to spend time reassociating. So the benefit of mycorrhizae in transplanting that is huge. And that is the time uh, that we really want clients, whether it be landscapers, greenhouse growers, propagation facilities, homeowners, we really want you to consider what the benefit of applying mycorrhizae here is uh, as you upplant. In summary, um, mycorrhizae is a super interesting category. Um, there's been a lot of information out there about it for a couple decades. And just a couple points as to how we approach it. Uh, single species, you'll as often as possible, we use glomus interatices. We don't want competition with other funguses at the root for space. Um, by the way, glomus interatices has been renamed and that's uh, relatively recent news. Uh, Rhizophagus, Irregularis is the new name of Glomus interatices. Both will be found on Google. Uh, to the right, you see Quick Colonizer. This Glomus interatices is also very efficient, very quick to associate with plant material. Its specialty is uptake of phosphorus. So the uptake of a very important uh, element for plant growth, uh, it transfers it efficiently we write here also a good collaborator. Uh, it works with a wide variety of plants. Upward of 95% of plant material that's grown in this region, uh, greenhouse grown, is going to be able to be colonized by mycorrhizae. And this particular spore, the Glomus interatices, is an excellent um, contributor in terms of moving water and nutrients. So I'll come back in a little bit after Lance gets a chance to discuss biofungicide and I'll turn it over to him right now. Lance. Thanks, John. I uh, just need to get unmuted and get back on. So uh, I'm going to start off talking about biofungicide and then I'm going to move into a short section uh, covering both 
uh, the addition of biofungicide and mycorrhizae to some of our mixes. Um, So biofungicide, uh, the type of microorganism we're using is a bacteria and it's bacillus. Uh, we use both bacillus subtilis and bacillus pumilus in uh, the different promixes that we have. We use, uh, the reason we use two, um, we use bacillus pumilus when we combined uh, the biofungicide with the uh, mycorrhizae. These two work in conjunction with each other uh, the best. Through research we've done, we found that they work together the best and benefit the plant the most um, in mixes that don't have both uh, the bio and the mycorrhizae. Uh, we use uh, a strain of Bacillus subtilis. Um, bacillus um, will colonize with the plant roots uh, and it will, um, do a few things for it. Uh, it forms a biofilm, uh, as you can see in this picture on this slide, uh, it forms a biofilm around the root and not only the root, but also the mycorrhizae. And uh, it, it ensures protection against uh, plant pathogens um, such as uh, Pythium, Rhizoctonia and Fusarium. Um, and it, it uh, induces the plant's uh, sy systematic resistance, um, which is the IRS. Um, it also acts as a biostimulant uh, uh, that will stimulate root growth and the proliferation of the root hairs. Uh, and we'll show you that in some pictures in some of the next slides uh, to favor the absorption again, get the plant more uh, nutrients and water and let them, uh, let the plant uh, focus on growing instead of trying to find nutrients and water. Um, so some of the benefits, uh, faster seed germination um, and plant establishment, uh, as, as I said, it stimulates the root system development. It's gonna enhance uh, water and nutrient uptake and, um, it's gonna increase uh, the tolerance uh, to environmental stresses. And a lot of that's just because you have a stronger, healthier plant and it can survive better when you transplant it uh, out into the yard, the garden, your flower beds, uh, larger pots outside, things like that. And then of course, uh, it's, it helps strengthen the plant against disease resistance. Uh, this, this is a, a slide and a graph of a trial uh, using ProMix with, uh, which is on the left, with, with, without biofungicide is on the left, with biofungicide are the plants on the right. And in this trial and others that, uh, similar trials that we found and compared uh, mix, ProMix without to with, we found that it suppressed Pythium in uh, this one's with geranium seedlings and then other crops um, in the trials. Uh, in the pro mix without biofungicide, only about 55% of the geraniums were grown healthy. Uh, so you had 45% that you would probably lose or have loss in, in your greenhouse. Whereas the pro mix with the biofungicide added, uh, the percentage of healthy plants increased from 55 to 88%, or you only had a 12% loss. So uh, you could see with, and that's with one application in the soil, you're not having to uh, reapply it. Uh, you're not having to come in back after and add it. And, you know, no, no need for that. So, um, and these results we, we did, uh, after four weeks of growing. Um, so uh, now we'd like to just briefly discuss uh, what we call our plus product. Um, and that is uh, ProMix with both biofungicide and mycorrhizae added. Um, and that does two things. It enhances the plant uh, through 
the addition of mycorrhizae and what John explained mycorrhizae doing uh, by the use of fertilization and water increase, uh, resistance to stress, improve, uh, improves the plant's strength and productivity, and then also protects using the biofungicide um, by um, protecting from diseases, like I said, fusarium, pythium, rhizoctonia, and um, it uh, and it helps to also increase in that protection the strength and viability of the root system that's there. Um, so on this slide, uh, I think this is a great slide. Uh, we have three pictures. Uh, the picture on the left shows uh, a root hair uh, that runs along the, the left of, of the slide with the mycorrhizae hyphae coming out and then a viable spore. Um, the picture in the middle shows a root with uh, mycorrhizae uh, coming off the root and then the biofungicide or the bacillus uh, bacteria protecting actually form forming that bio that biofilm around and protecting the root and the mycorrhizae. And then the slide on the right side shows um, the actual uh, extensions of the root hairs and how you can see that the, the more that prol proliferates, the better you're gonna have for water nutrient uptake and a stronger root system overall, which is gonna help your plant um, uh, the top growth, actually. Uh, John had a, a good phrase that he likes to, to, to use, and I thought it was really good, and that's power to flower. So if you've got a good, strong, healthy root system, it's going to give your plant a lot more power and strength to flower stronger, uh, produce better colors, be, be stronger up top, and uh, have that vibrant colors that you're looking for. Uh, in this trial, um, uh, it, so we have two photographs. On the left, you'll see uh, photographs of petunia starts um, with the control on the left and the bio mic added. These are both promix, one without, again, one without the bio and mic and one with. And then on the right slide, Again, control and promix with bio and mic added uh, growing dahlias. Uh, and as you can see from both, it's very visible. The root development in both crops is greatly enhanced with the bio mycorrhizae, bio and mycorrhizae, uh, which again, it translates to um, the energy being able to take in from trying to protect the roots and do that and go out and search for nutrients and go out and search for water because you've got such a stronger um, system to do that, it results in increased top growth, uh, flowers um, and, and better health, health of the plant overall. Um, and just, just kind of in review, uh, the benefits of active ingredients um, are, uh, you have better initial plant establishment and a shortened growth life, life cycle. Um, reduction in crop loss due, due to root diseases, as we discussed. You've got enhanced crop uniformity and quality. You're going to see a lot more uniform crops um, and the quality of the crops are going to be a lot better. Uh, you'll have improved trans plant survival, as both John and I have talked about, from both mycorrhizae and bio. It just helps the plant to be able to take that transplant shock and, uh, and, and begin a quicker, quicker restart and, and regrowth. And then um, you will also be able to see an extended shelf life. We've seen uh, through trials uh, at the garden centers, um, maybe box stores if you sell there, um, and then increased uh, yields. And, um, one thing I'd like to point out is sometimes, you know, you can look at a, a plant and you guys are all probably great growers that we're talking to today, which are what most of the growers we work with or pretty much all the growers we work with are. But if you really want to see uh, increased yields, uh, we always recommend that 
you do a trial on your vegetable crop and take some of those crops and grow them all the way through. Uh, that's when you'll see that plant really have a stronger plant, uh, such as say tomatoes or cucumbers. You, they'll, they'll start to produce earlier, they'll flower earlier, they'll produce earlier, they'll produce a more even uh, tomato crop or cucumber crop or other crops and um, and a lot more fruit. And that's the same thing that's happening with your flower crops, but sometimes you can't see it as well, but you are still giving your customers a much better plant that they're gonna remember and come back to you and say, hey, I, I want that plant again. And uh, now I'll turn it back over to John uh, so we can discuss uh, some of our product plants. All right, Lance, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna hustle through the uh, last couple slides here. Uh, you'll see Mycorrhizae products take different forms. These are ours. Uh, Mike Pro Landscape is a bagged product, 10.9 uh, quart uh, size is the largest uh, that it's available. Really great for landscapers doing work, uh, you know, in, in commercial construction, they're putting trees and shrubs in the parking lot of a Walmart. It's a really rugged environment to live your life as a plant. So super important for them to use products like this to make sure we can decrease losses in those situations. It's applied uh, at the perimeter of the root ball. We want it to be close to active roots. We need that spore to be very close uh, to where it can then colonize quickly and start these benefits. Same with the Mike uh, retail products. You've probably seen a lot of these in garden centers. Uh, we've got different colors of containers, which signify different types of products. Uh, the most popular is by far the Mike tree and shrub because you're handling high value plants there. You want your trees and your shrubs to survive. Uh, comes in very handy. We also have a version for hemp and cannabis. It's a uh, extremely concentrated. It's applied as a slurry. And I think I've got one minute left to show you how that looks uh, on a video. Great spores here in the first panel photograph. We mix, stir, dip, and transplant here in the second. And incredibly potent, 6,000 viable spores per gram. Great video showing the process as the product is in a powder form. It's mixed at a one-to-one -one ratio, slurry created, very simple to dip the plant and go on to the larger container. Well, uh, we wish we were in the room with you, but please take note of this information. Uh, if we need to get in touch, drop us an email, a phone call, whatever it is you wish. Lance, I'm gonna bring us back on here for the goodbye video. I want to thank you for your time over there in Salt Lake. And I will look forward to seeing a lot of the folks that have watched this during the spring. We are out. We are seeing growers, COVID protocol, whatever your requirements are. We have our requirements as well. Everyone would be safe should we need to meet. Please don't hesitate to engage us for that or Zoom call or good old fashioned phone call. Lance, any last words? No, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a great spring.